Hi everyone, this is Son of Jadda from Stanley Supercon. Join me for this wonderful vlog about this very special Comic Con that celebrates 100th birthday of Stanley and it's the first Comic Con in Jadda in four years. We are in, finally, we're having a Comic Con in Jeddah after a long time, in Saudi Arabia after a long time because the last Comic Con that happened was in Riyadh, which was Stanley's Super Con 2019. I came in early, this is like the first batch of guests that you're looking at. are the statues Iron Man Captain America Black Panther and then there's Nick Fury And then their Iron Man stealth armor. And this one. The classic red and yellow, but I don't think that's Mark 1. These are the props that were used in the movie, in one of Marvel's movies. A complete attire. Then you have Ant-Man's helmet, War Machine helmet, Edith sunglasses. You've got that Iron Man glove with infinity stones the iron man briefcase from uh, iron man 2 and the device without which tony stark couldn't survive So here's a kiosk of Stanley Supercon merch, official Stanley Supercon merch. Here are the prices. You can get these t-shirts and they have some figure sets, they have some Funkos. الله يا فهد كيف الحال اسم المتجر اوتاكو ستور اوتاكو ستور وين محلك آه حي الصفا شارع عمر قرى طيب انت مختصص بالانمي فقط مزبوط. ولا عندك في مارفل ودي سي في, في مارفل بيجي مارفل مارفل وانيميشن بشكل مجسمات ولا فيجرز كمان فيجرز مجسمات ريزن كلها 
طيب ممكن انا اصور المنتجاتك يعطيك العافيه جميل جدا جايز ذس از اوتاكو ستور دي ار لوكيتد اون ام القرى ستريت هي الصفا صح الصفا ديستريكت ديز جايز اف يو ار ان انيمي فان يو دونت نيد تو جو اني وير ان ماي اوبينين بيكوز اي بين تو ذير ستور اميزنج ستف دي هاف اند ذس تو از اولسو ذير ديسبلاي ذس تو از اولسو they even have this walking dead bat yeah take a look then we've got gut store now these guys have some really awesome stuff when it comes to a deadly combination between marvel dc anime i see so many good things there so you're looking at a beautiful display that has marvel characters and even dc characters i love that statue of batman from the batman the animated series they have other pop culture from american pop culture but they also have other than that they have these uh ismail kareem ya habibna ismail faraz bukhari hayak allah ya faraz faraz is the owner of fantastic figures fantastic figures and this is my card you can check it so if anyone feels like scanning they can do it right now طيب faraz mahallak fil jeddah wala online online store online store طيب آه كيف الناس آه وصل في حسابك كيف بتواصلوا معي كيف بتواصلوا معي عند عن طريق الموقع عند عن طريق الايميل وعند عن طريق التليجرام والواتساب تسلم يا فراس حياك ا بيوتيفول ديسبلاي اوف ارت اوف سبايدر مان ذيرز ذا كوبرا كاي سبيشال اريا وير كيدز اند ادلتس كان براكتس ذير مارشال ارتس and then we have is this area that seems like having some niche stuff so what do we have here then we have this company good smile company assalam alaikum indakum mujassimat bas wa anime ah the little things the mau and the mau little things la la hadi little things ah okay this one Doctor Who fans This one's for you
Okay. We are having something from Walking Dead. Looking at Doctor Strange. <laughs> Eye of Agamotto. And I think that's either the book of Vishanti or it's Dark Hold. I think it's Vishanti. Now there's something there for Black Widow. Black Widow's bracelets. Birds of Prey, Suicide Squad, Harley Quinn. Her back and her belly. Jazeera Talkan's stall. Jazeera Talkan's they have classic anime. You can see Eisenberg. You can see Treasure Island, Jack Sparrow. Then you have Gamerverse, Spider-Man, they've got so much going on. They even have masks if you're a cosplayer. Caps, Deadpool, Venom, Punisher, Flash. They even have some other statues. This is the Kotobukiya Invisible Woman. Mjolne. Beautiful. They even have Captain America shield for the little ones. Beautiful. Now this is something worth looking at. Jomaro statue. I think they are the only store in Jeddah that sell Metal Gear Solid and Mortal Kombat action figures. This He-Man set, wow. I know who printed, 3D printed this one. This is from I need to ask these guys. Mazinger, Jungar, Grandizer. You name it. They have it. Guys, this beautiful guy you see and his son. Firaj. Faris wa Firaj. Yes. MashaAllah. How are you? How are you? Welcome. Congratulations on a beautiful booth. Thank you. MashaAllah. What do you think? 
Jackie. Captain Jack Sparrow, Majdi, Majdi, yeah. the guy. Oh, welcome, welcome, man. Welcome. Jack Sparrow, yeah, Habibi, where did you come up with this? Yeah, this is uh, Jack Sparrow, Japanese version. A basic version. Yeah. No silver. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 Habibi. Zimn al Habibi. Sons of Jitta. Sons of Jitta, one hit. Thank you. Here you go. Guys, I've been told that this chess area that you see is actually for Queen's Gambit. Let's see what happens. Now I'm heading towards the celebrity area to see which celebrities are gonna be making the appearance. Of course we know which ones are there. I'll try to see if I can wave at some of the celebrities that I see in front of me. Guys, you're looking at Mr. Flash Gordon, Sam Jones. Jeddah. In our hometown, thank you for coming to our hometown. Power to Flash Guard. Guys, if you have seen Hawkeye series, you know him as the tracksuit mafia head. Alex Panovich, please say something for people of Jeddah. Thank you to our, uh, for coming to our hometown. Thank you for having me. And we loved you in Hawkeye. Thank you, man. Want to see you more in MCU. You got it, I think today that's about it. Some of the other celebrities who are going to be coming over here. These guys are going to be coming a bit late. Now I'm entering the area which looks like the artist alley. Some local artists. Pretty busy. I'm going to be going to their stalls one by one. A good number of local artists and local artists with international prominence are here. Another display of anime merchandise, anime accessories. Mind the Marvel or DC. Yeah, and this is by you. Yeah. You okay. We have the Galaxy uh, theme here. As you can see, this all initial design and procreate uh, by procreate. Uh, okay. So basically, these creative ladies from left. Yeah. Okay. Can you please introduce yourself? As you can see here. No, no, yourself, here. yourself. Myself. I am Star. I'm a designer and a designer, Photoshop designer. Okay. And also digital artist. Mashallah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am Moadda. 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 Yes. I am Moadda and I am also digital artist. Okay. And you? I am Aisha, her sister. Okay. I am helping her to sell stuff here. Okay. What these ladies are doing is basically they are giving you your favorite anime art but the only difference that's there is this isn't something that they've bought from outside they themselves have designed all of this that you see in front of you so, and i have the cosplayer welcome everyone i'm joseph Crossy of sumi image 
and welcome to Stanley Supercon, my first time here in Jitta. Here what I have everything I designed myself from 2D painting to prison crystals and those shirts, first illustrator, then printed cut vinyls and then iron press on these. Guys, if you're looking for a decent magneto t-shirt, this guy has it. He did it. If you're looking for a Batman t-shirt, this he guy designed it. And metallic gold. Small, medium, large, and XL. Do you have your social media over here? Sumi Image 01 on Instagram. Can you repeat it? S-U-M-I-I-M-A-G-E-01. Sumi Image 01. Power to you, buddy. And of course, be with you. alaikum. Uh, I think the 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 and this is Ismail Karim. Asail. As Asail. Son of Jadda. Huh? Son of Jadda. Oh, yes, I know you. <laughs> Asail and I came across uh, through email. She was interested to participate and share her artwork. Paib, I'm going to be asking her. Yeah. Asail, Hadi kullo tasmimat minnak. Okay, so you're looking at another original artist of anime stuff. When is social media? Okay, hala, Momo store. This is her social profile. Follow her. Next. They advertised that bear like a cute little bear, a cute little teddy bear. He wasn't very cute, was he? had a bad mouth. Did, didn't they do the edit? So when I got the role after four times going in, when I got the role, I finally said, okay, just so you guys know, my improv wasn't Polish, it was Serbian, but if we can make them Serbian, that would be cool. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so let's just see what do we have in the vendor section. Quite a lot of vendors are out here. We've got comics and collectibles. So basically, what are you guys selling over here? So you've got only what? We have novels, we have uh, single comic books, we have some toys, retro toys or and So guys they have, I see G.I. Joe classified series, they have uh, McFarland toys DC, they also have Batman black and white miniature figures and my favorite cowboy logan wolverine so they've got still comic book sets and, and, and graphic novels thank you guys now i'm standing here uh, at this really interesting booth I presume you're John Constantine. John Constantine. Pleasure meeting you, sir. So, uh, you still go by the name Hellblazer or just Con Constantine? Yes, both. Both. Okay, so can you just take me through the booth that you are representing? So, uh, I'm here from I'm here from the USA, helping to represent Rachel Litvin, author of Chronicles of Royal High. Okay. She is the author. She has two books out in the series. Are these books available on Amazon? They are available on Amazon. Okay. And basically, uh, so she, it's like uh, Dungeons, Dragons, Dungeons Knights, and Dragons, Swords. Meets Harry Potter type thing. Okay. Young adult fantasy. And is she the author? She is the author. My God Almighty. Also over there. What's your book? The author is providing the full brand experience 
by actually dressing up as her character, the one she has been writing about in her novels. So I'm going to be talking to her specifically about her approach. It's a very unique approach. Rachel Litfin. The thing I'm really impressed about this lady is the fact that uh, she believes in providing the brand experience 100%. So you might have seen people uh, reading other people's work and then uh, doing the cosplay about them. She is the author. Her, she is representing her imagination. Rachel, first of all, this is very creative, very unique. Thank you for coming to Jeddah. Thank you for having me, Jeddah. What inspired you to do this? What inspired me to do this? By this, what do you mean? Coming here or writing my series? Not exactly. And I'm not even asking about writing the series. I'm talking about the total package that you came total up with. Total package? Okay. So, my story, I'll try and keep it short. Sure. Um, first and foremost, I was a writer before I was a cosplayer. Okay. This is my main character of my story. Her name is Adela Everhart. And I actually created her when I was 13 years old. Wow. And when I was a teenager, I was creating this little world. I would write it, I'd draw pictures of my characters when I was 13, 14, 15, 16 years old in those years. And when I was graduating high school myself, because I'm from the States, I'm from California, um, I had like an 80 page manuscript of this, whatever it was going to be, when I graduated high school. Also at that time in my teen years and into my 20s, I started cosplaying. And I got distracted because I love dressing up. So I've, if you scroll back in my social media history far enough, you can see a lot of my cosplay presence back in the day. It was summer 2017. By this point, I was 25 years old, and I had 600 pages written on this series at that point. I was very distracted cosplaying. I didn't have direction in my life. And I had a moment, I was at San Diego Comic-Con. I was dressed up as Wonder Woman in all of her armor. And I had this moment where I was like, what am I doing? I love cosplaying, but I, I have a 600 page manuscript of a book that I have written since I was a teenager. And it's my life, it's my heart. Why am I not publishing this? And I had that turning point of that moment. I knew, and by February 2018, I used my entire Comic-Con background with all the people I've known for the last, you know, how many years I was cosplaying, and I used my social media platform, and I rebranded, and I became a fantasy author. I published The Lost Noble in February 2018, and I've gone on since then. I published Dragon's Wrath in February 2020. My third book, The Rogue Prince, will be out in 2023. And so now I do more author signings than I do cosplay, but once in a while I still break out the characters and I am now cosplaying one of the characters from my book. This is Adela Everhart. How I envision her when she's not 15 years old anymore, but when she's a grown woman and already a queen. This is one of my interpretations of her. Be that is my story. Believe in your ideas before and anybody else does and live it i tell this to people all the time nobody is going to believe in your idea more than you do and when you live it in every area of your life and you know it in your heart and your soul and it just you live that out i didn't wake up and do this overnight this has been now 17 years of a cumulative creation and I'm from California and somehow I am now in Saudi Arabia signing my books. I've signed my books all over the United States, but I'm in sign signing my books and cosplaying here in Saudi Arabia, Jeddah Supercon. I'm here at a very good store. They send printed items. These are some really, really good products that they have for Marvel, DC, Looney Tunes, Disney, all of these characters. Assalamu alaikum. Kef halak? Wallah ma shal hal. Gul lak, ish al ismal majjarak? Ihna ism majjarna majjika. Ihna ibarah an tibah hirariya ala mawad muhtalifa, ala mawad kutir, ceramik, plastik, rubber, mehaftar asriya, wa khaylat Disney, wa marham, 
طيب لو اي احد ارسل لك التصميم بعد كم ايام آه اي منتج جاهز؟ على حسب مقاس المنتج طيب هل عندك كرت لا لا كرت العمل سو جايز ذس از هو دي ار ماجيكال ديزاينز دي ار اون انستغرام تشيك ذيم اوت دي هاف سم ريلي اوسم برودكتس السلام عليكم كيف حالكم يا جماعه الله يحييك طيب اسم المتجر وايش ببيعوا ايش الاختصاص حقكم نينجا شوروم طيب آه ايش المنتجات عندكم اكثر اغلب اغلب المنتجات اكسسوارز وفيجرز اكسسوارز وفيجرز انمي ولا مارفل دي سي انمي يا جماعه هاف ا لوك ات ذس بيوتيفول اكشن فيجرز تسلم يا اخي Okay guys I'm right now approaching two of the geekiest geeksters geeksters I've ever known <laughs> to the extent these guys back in 2011 decided that they needed to start Saudi Arabia and Arab world's first comic book uh well actually we are the first uh psychological thriller uh, comic book series in Saudi in, in Arabia actually and all of the Middle East so you these guys have three accolades and uh, i'm here with Hello. zaid adham yep. co creator of fail he's the writer okay uh, and then is yasser ali rida yep. co creator of fail he's the illustrator the artist and these guys finally after all these years decided that they have to come back to jeddah and promote whale yes. guys it's a huge delight to see you guys here with such a beautiful uh, setup that you guys have thank you and thank these, you very much. they are selling their comic books by the way these comic books of whale are available even in stores in uk like orbital comics can we get them in uae yes we can, yes, we can. they are okay. available in comic stop they are available they used to be available in comic cave i believe they are still available in kino kuni as well yeah so there you have it these guys quietly uh, have been doing a lot of uh, stuff uh, the only thing i have an issue with them is that these guys are too humble they don't they should be boasting about their achievements <laughs> more than anybody else we'll get there we'll, we'll get hopefully there. Oh, we will support the jeddah and the rest of the arab world can give us we'll be able to finally put all 12 chapters together and release the graphic novel that's the cover right yeah. there yeah help us with our kickstarter and then yes. we'll get there yeah. help them with their kickstarter these guys are own help them thank you guys Hello. You're looking at Crimson Maher. Yeah. Funny story. One time at a sahur party. I know you. Yes, we, you do. Finally, we meet. <laughs> we introduced each other as if. Hi, I don't know you, but I'm, now I do. <laughs> as if two superheroes would introduce themselves. I said, Crimson. He said, Yes, son of Jabda. Hello, Allah. <laughs> Crimson Maher is someone who ha who was recently invited by the Ministry of Culture Saudi Arabia to talk about the importance of comics uh, not only in the world of art and literature but also how much of an impact they have on the society itself. Yeah. Maher, nice to see you here. Nice to see you too, man. Have You're fun. having a great time? We just got here. Just got here. Just got here. Then I'm not going to stop you from enjoying. No okay. Right now you're looking at our very own Muhammad As-Sudairi who goes by Mo Art. 
Now, why I love this guy is because, first of all, he's a phenomenal artist who's creating a lot of good stuff, but he brings back a lot of good memories thanks to his connection with nostalgia, which you can see at the back, everybody. So Mo, first of all, thank you very much for coming to Jeddah to attend Stanley Supercon. How are you feeling? Excellent, excellent. Now it's it's calmer. It's calmer. Yeah. <laughs> now the first day is always difficult. Yeah. First day, first marriage, first day at school, everything yeah. is different. I'm trying to get the lay of the land. Amazing man, amazing. Yeah. So you guys are having a great time then. Uh, excellent. Take good care of yourself. You too. Okay, next up is another one artist in the artist gallery. How are you? I'm fine. I'm doing great. These ladies that I see over here, they represent Crescent Moon. Okay, can you please explain us what Crescent Moon is all about? Crescent Moon, it's a more than one store. We have two artists in here and one artist has the, that does resin art. Okay, resin art. That's these. These are made of resin. Okay, I need to ask you something. You yeah. guys are not like too much into uh, other properties. I see like uh, some anime cute characters. Yes. Other than that, you guys are creating your own. What's the game? Exactly. Everything is original. Do you classify yourself as a digital artist? Yes. Okay, so we've got two ladies who are doing digital art yes. and they are also producing merch and a lot of other stuff. Yes. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Are you guys on Instagram? Yes, we are. Okay, so guys, find Crescent Moon on Instagram. You don't need a telescope for that. Thank you. I'm at the booth of a 3D artist. Ismail Bugis. How are you doing? Thank you. Really delighted to see you, man. This guy is an amazing 3D artist. I love his attention to detail. You can follow him on Instagram. This is his QR code. He, these sculpts are handmade by him. This is not some the work of the machine. I was wrong. I thought this was 3D printed. It's so, challenging 3D printed. Ismail, I'm amazed with your work seriously because this Jumaro head that you've done is my favorite. Guys, appreciate the our our own brother Ismail Bogues. I've shared his uh, social profile. Make sure to follow him. You're welcome. There are some other artists over here. What are these? Uh, bookmarks. Bookmarks. Yes. Yeah. bookmarks. How do you pronounce your uh, name? S Sweet X Carnage? Sweet X Carnage, yes. Okay, Sweet X Carnage is uh, producing bookmarks of our favorite characters. Yes. Okay, lots of comic book readers, lots of novel readers. You are the first person I came across who actually decided to make a bookmark of a superhero property. Yes, because honestly, we're in Comic Con. I usually like to make my art depending on the theme, and the theme is comic So I decided to at least include some of the comics. Like you have Captain America, Iron Man, Batman, and uh, Hulk, as well as I do have stickers of the logos. Right. Of the I have handmade uh, and I also have handmade uh, stickers that I made myself. 
these are the stickers she's talking about guys these guys are making x men stickers you must be a hardcore reader nobody makes x men like this why it's a classic no because everybody you ask they only know thanos spider man that's it Okay, you guys are on Instagram? Yes. Okay, follow them on Instagram. Sorry guys, sorry for disturbing you. This is their QR code and that's their name. Make sure to follow them on Instagram. Thank you very much. Pleasure is all mine. These are your own? Yes. Okay, so she does her own art as well. These are your own characters? Yes, I had a dream about her. dream about him as well? Yes. Most of my characters come from my dreams. So I came, uh, this, this guy came to eat me alive in my dream and I had to draw him. Is your name Wanda? No. <laughs> you sure about that? Yes, for sure. And I had a dream about her. A girl wakes up in a dead, body, a dead human body and she tries to call for help. But people keep thinking that she's a monster, but she's just a normal monster. Now I know why does she have this uh, conflicting name, Sweet X Carnage. Exactly. So we have something sweet and carnage at the same time. I'm amazed. And definitely what you've done for superheroes, you deserve this. Thank you so much. Guys, I'm here with another local artist with a lot of talent. Her name is Lava Art. Lavender. Lavender Art. I don't know why I insist on lava. Maybe it's my masculine nature. Anyways. Uh, lavender art don't go for the name it sounds very feminine and very aesthetic but she is drawing some really hardcore action anime inspired and her art is beautiful okay, see here. There is my she, original art. so she has a portfolio amazing do you have okay you can follow her guys on these platforms she is an amazing artist with a lot of potential thank you thank you so much for giving me the time Okay guys, this here is the comic art gallery with a lot of memorabilia that's outside, uh, out there. So if you want to take a photo with a Star Wars backdrop or any other series, The Mandalorian, they have everything over here. So most of it is comic art. They have some other features. Oh, they have some memorabilia, collectibles from Star Wars. Oh, The Mandalorian helmets. Okay, this is issues from the Silver Age, mostly Marvel Comics, Tales of Suspense, Daredevil first issue, The Uncanny X-Men by Stan and Jack, Amazing Fantasy by Steve Ditko and Stan Lee. So these comics, CGC graded, are also on display. And they, oh my god, they even have Ghost Rider. Oh boy, the Golden Age issue, the Human Torch, the Human Torch versus the Submariner from the Golden Age, what kick started Marvel Comics, Tales to Astonish, Ant Man, Moon Knight, Werewolf by Night issue, Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commando, signed by Stan Lee. Amazing. Another Stanley signed issue of the Silver Surfer. These are amazing. Something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you going to call? 
This guy came all the way from Riyadh. He loves Ghostbusters member Spangler. Look at his attention to detail. I mean, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed with your cosplay. Keep it up. Okay guys, we are now heading towards a very special collector. This guy, if you're an into 80s stuff, he has it all. You're looking at the Sideshow collectible statue, life-size bust of Batman. You're looking at a beautiful Frank Miller art, Batman vs. Joker. You have CW Arrowverse. Stephen Amell and then at the back he has Space Jam from the 90s, Bionic 6, a lot of other act figures. I see the Killing Joke, Joker statue. Now if you want to see his full collection you can check out my earlier shorts. I have shown his collection. His name? Guru why are you shying away man? <laughs> because I don't want to face the camera. <laughs> guys, you're looking at Guru Zone. And Hello, how are you guys? Thanks, man, for putting it on your blog. And pleasure that you came back again. You deserve it. You're doing all the hard work. You're bringing Thanks. in a lot of good memories. You're bringing in a lot of rare stuff. Yeah, yeah. Jungar, Grandizer, Bruce Lee, Funko Pops, rare Funko Pops. You won't believe every second customer who came right now. Yeah. You wanted Grandizer and Jack Sparrow. Okay. Jack Sparrow is uh, the limelight for tonight. Beautiful. Mohammed, I wish you all the best, man. Thanks, man. You ha you've made a beautiful booth. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, guys, I have here two wonderful cosplayers. The reason I like their cosplay is because they kept it really simple. They just had the tiaras. One is dressed up like Wanda, the other one is like Lady Loki. I just love the dedication. So, any other character you guys are fans of? Thor. Yes, Thor. sure. Yes. I have been Thor in the Thor? last SuperCon. Yeah, yeah. I was Thor. So, isn't that a contradiction? You're wearing Loki and you like Thor. It's at the end of the day, both are as guardians. <laughs> Thank you so much. Enjoy. Guys, I'm standing here with a lady. Uh, can you please give us your name? My name is Zahia. Zahia? Yes. Okay. Ustaz Zahia, she asked me a question. She said that uh, I want to buy Stanley poster. So I thought maybe she's buying for somebody else. So I asked her, I mean, is it for who? And she says it's for her. Next thing you know, it turns out she is a huge fan of Stanley. Yes. Tayyip. Siti, please tell us. What got you into reading Stan Lee's works? Everybody, from, from kids to adults, they watch his, um, uh, the movies, all the comic uh, movies. Okay. Uh, and he knows that every, every movie he must get in the movie for like five minutes or anything he writes, he, can, uh, he appears in his movies. So you're a fan because yes. of his cameos? Yes. Guys, look, anybody can be a fan of Stan Lee. Ustaz Zahia has proved it to us. I can't thank you enough for your time. Thank you so much. We're going to be having a very interesting discussion concerning the new age of comics. As many of you know that comics started out back in the 1930s or even way before. They were mostly print editions. But since we are in the digital age right now, there is a lot of progression happening in that respect. I'm sure some of you may have come across the digital screens in the art gallery. So before I take much of your time, I have the honor to invite on stage Mr. Alex Bonovich, executive producer of Gen Zeros, and Mr. Mike Bundy, CEO, CEO of Stanley, 
Supercon, the man and his team who made this event possible. Uh, as I was giving the introduction, comics everybody is familiar with uh, the print editions, okay, the direct to market editions and everything. But you guys have done something really groundbreaking. Why is the fact that uh, we are coming across things that comics are now becoming non fungible tokens or NFTs as they call them? So, can you please elaborate for our audience over here what exactly the project is all about? Alex, I'll start with you. Yeah, we, uh, we have a project that I'm executive producing and starring in, and you can look it up. It's called genzeros.com. And um, we have, we filmed episodes, live action episodes. And um, so you see actors from the show, The 100, Battlestar Galactica, Nancy Drew, they, we, we cast them in the show. And then the, what we did was the live action, the way you would see it, and then we go right into a comic book. And just like that. And, um, you get to tell, you get to see the story not only with live action, it goes into comic book as an NFT and you can own parts of the comic book, you can have a say in how the comic book goes and it's really exciting and we, we, we got really lucky because Mike helped us out with helping getting, getting the comic book happening um, and the only reason why we really have the comic book right now is because of Mike. So if you go to genzeros.com, you can see it all, and it's a non-fungible token, and you can be involved with helping us create the show, and that's what makes it really exciting. How many of you guys know what an NFT is? Have you seen NFTs? Yeah? So NFTs traditionally are either a movie or they're just a, a symbol image. So the biggest thing with Gen Zeros is that the NFT, you can actually turn the pages, you can read the story, and they're actually act they're currently turning it into TV shows. It's pretty cool. Do you want to tell, talk about like what the storyline for Gen Zeros is? Yeah, the storyline for Gen Zeros is, is 10 factions. And how we did it, what I think is super great and exciting is um, House of Kiba made, a sh made NFTs 10,000 NFTs and in 40 minutes we made over seven million dollars and that was from the community and what we did was we want to give more to the community and make a TV show out of it and so we made 10 factions 10 different ways of how people see the earth and how they they want the earth to be and so they're they're robots and warriors in 10 different costumes and 10 different ways of life and how, how it comes together and who wants to run the world the way that they run the world. So it's 10 different stories and it's all put together and if you go genzeros.com you get to really see the different worlds of how people want to live and how they expect other people to live and it's, it's really exciting. There's a lot of action and a lot of great actors involved and, and so we're really excited about it. Okay, uh, Mike, you have been keeping a surprise for quite some time. I mean, it's high time. I mean, like, we're on the second day of Comic Con. Right. Did any of you go to 2019 Riyadh Comic go to Supercon there? Or just, all right. Hey, we got one. All right. In 2019, I actually started a project hey, um, called Reactor Motors. And for it, uh, because I, I love Iron Man, you came to it, go. Um, hey, so we, we did a, in 2019, I started working. I mean, you guys know Iron Man, right? Yeah? Can I get a hand for Iron Man, please? Iron Man. Right, thank you. So, I worked on it, and you guys know what a McLaren is? The supercar McLaren? I know that there's a lot of fun cars. Yeah, so we ended up doing, we took a McLaren, and I wanted to make a McLaren that Iron Man would have driven. So I ended up designing a McLaren that has a, a reactor on the front, has lights and everything, and in January of this year, like you do with all McLarens, we gave it away. So we did an NFT where basically people could come in and buy an NFT and for the small price of the NFT, one person got to drive, drive home with a this Iron Man McLaren. That's awesome. Yeah, and so in the process, it inspired a comic book that's coming out that's sort of like, uh, you guys know Fast and the Furious, right? So imagine Fast and the Furious meets Tron. So it's Fast and the Furious, Fast and Furious set in the future called Reactor Motors, and we have a sneak peek of some of the cars. So these are the cars that actually people were buying wow. in the NFTs. These are all out. These sold out immediately. Wow. We have another ones coming up. With the NFTs, you actually can 
you get your own car and no one else has a car like yours. It is entirely yours and you can race it. Wow. So these cars, I mean, it's fine to have the cars, but we ended up writing this story where a geologist ended up thinking, um, finding these crystals called the reactor crystals and the crystals when they touch metal they make the, the metal like vibrate so fast that they end up turning them into these cars so now people get to race the cars and so because of that it ended up getting a lot of interest in becoming a comic book and we actually have a movie that we're working on right now for thank you guys for coming so much i thought i'd just give something away because i haven't really given that much away yet um, so i have just because we did the iron man McLaren. Oh, no way. Yeah. You did it. Oh, eat it. Eat it. So, the first person that can raise their hand and tell me. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait for the question. Wait for the question. And tell me Stanley's birthday. December 28th. <laughs> Congratulations. Share your name, please. Congratulations. So, there you heard it. Two of the most important people right now with respect to NFTs and comics. If you are, if you were concerned about the future of uh, comic book industry, it's in safe hands now. Thanks to Mike Burnley, Alec Bonovich, and many more people who come like this. Thank Elon you. Musk, if you're hearing me, please speak in favor of NFT comics. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank you, guys. Hey, enjoy the rest of the show, guys, okay? And those glasses look awesome on you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Guys for coming. Ecstatic to be hosting something really important because my background is from digital marketing and the NFTs is the next big thing happening and to be asked to host uh, to moderate this panel I just don't have the words honestly I don't have the words seriously I, I can't even describe my feeling I don't know what happened it's a wonderful atmosphere. I just got my pair of special edition Edith, Iron Man Edith sunglasses. Man, today has been amazing. Here we see the adorable Lexi Rabe from Avengers Endgame. Now this exhibition of uh, famous watches from Hollywood and superhero cinema curated by Carl Arnold and Andrea Perez. It was a really good experience. Guys, I'm right now over here with Hollywood Watches Collection owner, Carl. Carl, you've been a great support. You took me, gave me a tour of all the watches collection that you have. Now, for my fans, my viewers, I need you to show us the most prized collection you have, followed by the rest. Absolutely. All right, first, let me show you guys um, two of our most popular watches. Uh, these are both uh, JLC watches, and I'll take the top off for you. Okay. Now this one on the left, this is what Christian Bale wears in Batman. This is a JLC Reverso, so you can see you can flip it over and see the movement in the back. Guys, what Christian Bale wore? Carl's Hollywood watch collection has it. And this is another JLC. This is a perpetual uh, ultra thin. This perpetual calendar watch keeps track of uh, month, day, day, uh, day of the, the week. Uh, it's a very complex movement, all fit into a really small watch. This is uh, what Benedict Cumberbatch wears as uh, Doctor Strange in the Avengers. Amazing. And guys, since all of you are fans of uh, Multiverse of Madness, this important piece of I won't call it it's memorabilia it's a collectible and it's available here with Hollywood watches you can see it for yourself Carl amazing take us through others all right now let me show you guys um, some watches all right these are from the latest Ghostbusters movie the one on the left um, a Timex expedition uh, worn by Paul Rudd 
and then on the one on the right is what all the original Ghostbusters wear. Um, it's a Seiko voice note. You can actually record your voice and play it back. Um, very popular in the 80s. Amazing. Ghostbuster collection is here as well. Okay, what other exciting stuff is waiting for Marfa? Um, let me show you guys the James Bond watches. Those are always a crowd favorite. So we are heading to the so James Bond collection. We actually have two sets. We have earlier James Bond, Roger Moore and Pierce Brosnan. Um, these are in the um, 80s and early 90s we, the, where digital watches were much more popular. Um, so there are a lot of Seiko digital watches worn by, uh, by those actors here. Amazing. And then? And then Pierce Brosnan uh, in the 90s switched over to the Omega Seamaster. Daniel Craig continues to wear that. Um, so this is the Seamaster that uh, was made so popular by James Bond and then Daniel Craig's um, Planet Ocean and Special Edition Seamaster. Amazing. Now, uh, just a frank question. Yep. You've given us the heavyweights. Should we expect more? More watches? No, heavyweight watches. Just like Batman, Doctor Strange, Ghostbusters. Yeah. I, I'm happy to show you more. We, they're all really interesting. Please, they all please, have their please. own interesting stories. Um, let me show you guys the, the NASA watches. These are another Ooh. set of Omegas. That's history. Are, this one on the left, um, that's that's um, Omega Speedmaster, worn by all the Apollo astronauts um, on the, the first mission to the moon. Uh, the second one is a 50th anniversary edition. Uh, it's actually the Snoopy edition. If you look on the dial on the left, you can see Snoopy's face with a little yeah. um, helmet on. Right. The third one um, is what uh, Russian astronauts wear into space. Right. Uh, it's called a Sturmansky. Amazing. And then the fourth one is the most recent um, Omega that launched. It was a collaboration between Omega and Swatch. Uh, it's called the Moon Swatch. It's a bioceramic watch. It's very, very light for a mechanical watch. Amazing. Um, and it has the same uh, functionality as the Speedmaster. Guys, what Buzz Aldrin wore in space, they have that watch here that model it's here okay I see stranger things yep uh, so these are all from stranger things um, two Casios uh, these are actually very popular watches I own both of these um, yeah I remember my childhood day. yeah popular to this day um, and then the one on the right is uh, a Qbert watch it's actually a little video game that you can play on the watch uh, Qbert man yeah, so rare. 80s so 80s Okay, then this is like a mix. You've got Back to the Future, Jaws, and the Da Vinci Code. So which one is which? So the one on the left, the Casio, same uh, watch as Stranger Things. Like I said, very it's very popular in the 80s um, from Back to the Future. Right. The one on the right um, is the Mickey Mouse watch uh, that Tom Hanks wears in the Da Vinci Code. Um, and then the Alsta down at the bottom is uh, from Jaws. That's a traditional dive watch, so perfect for the movie Jaws. Okay, next up. So here's a, a, another um, just variety of watches from various movies. Um, and I can walk you, walk you guys through it. So sure. one on the left is a tag uh, right. that Matt Damon wears in The Born Identity. Um, the second watch is actually, this is our most valuable watch here, valued at fifty to sixty thousand dollars. Amazing. Um, the Rolex Day Date. Um, this is what Jennifer Aniston has worn. This is uh, the larger um, size. It's one of the most popular watches for um, our politicians and presidents around the world. Um, like I said, the our most valuable watch in the collection. The third one is a uh, Seiko um, Arnold Schwarzenegger wore in Predator. Amazing man. And the third one from Top Gun um, that Tom Tom Cruise wears. Oh boy, oh boy, I thought we were finished. We have, we have plenty more if you want to want to keep going. These are um, famous watches from Aliens, um, all Seikos, all very interesting watches, um, pretty unique in their own ways. Uh, this one, the pulse meter, the second one, and there's also another one down at the bottom actually tracks your heart rate, um, which was a pretty big innovation back when it was initially made. Amazing, amazing. So we've got, okay. 
Men in Black. So Men in Black, um, they always famously wear Hamilton watches. Um, very unique looking watches. Each actor wears a slightly different variation of the Hamilton Ventura. Um, here we have we have three of them: an, the automatic, uh, a quartz edition, and then the XXL on the right. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And last, I'll please take us through these watches. These are looking mostly like G-Shocks. Yep, there's a variety of G-Shocks that um, Tom Cruise wears in Mission Impossible. Uh, as you know, these watches are well known for their durability, so they're uh, perfect for, for uh, Tom Cruise in those movies. Amazing. Uh, by any chance, do you guys have an Instagram, Facebook uh, account or something? Um, we There is one for the event. Um, Stanley Supercon. Okay, so basically uh, you come under that. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you so much, Carl, for this. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, no. So here, so here's the thing. In in the DC kind of like canon, and in, in all and in, in like all of the world of DC, the only person who can like fight Superman. And Welcome to um, Al yeah. Albuquerque. Um, Albuquerque says Saudi Arabia. Yes, it's a. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Thank you for coming. Yes. Guys, I just saw this really good booth. They're selling Stanley Supercon chocolates. Well, actually, super s'mores. So, uh, hi there. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Having a great time here. I'm really like uh, surprised to see that there is a chocolate emblazoned with Stanley's uh, face. So, what's the connection we're looking at? Well, you know, Stanley did love a good super s'more, so we had to, you know, make it in honor of him. Guys, this is like you're having a bite out of history. Because if Stan loved s'more and if you're a fan of Stanley, you need to definitely get it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, we're here with Mr. Michael Duwalt. He is the representative for Rob Pryor, and he is going to be taking us through what Rob is doing here at Stanley Supercon. Mike, for our audiences, can you please take us through what exactly uh, this project has been all about and how are you guys enjoying Stanley Supercon in Jeddah? First of all, let me say we're enjoying Jeddah. It is one of the most beautiful cities. The people are so kind, so generous. Rob has had the best time and we're very much looking forward to coming back. Amazing. The, the art we have on display is among the last creative projects we did with Stan Lee. Stan approached Rob and he wanted him to paint portraits in comic book covers. Right. And they worked together to select 100 iconic Marvel covers. And Rob painted all the covers featuring Stan Lee as a cameo in the cover, the way he was going to be remembered by all of his fans in those great cameos, in those great moments. And that's the pieces we brought for display. Okay, can you please tell us which one of these portraits was Stan's all-time favorite? The Silver Surfer, which we brought prints of. This was, this was Stan Lee's favorite of the covers, and it was because it was his favorite character. He loved Silver Surfer. The original was made by John Bassama, right? Yes. Okay. And, and so we painted all the covers. A lot of the cover artists have seen these and been just blown away by, by the tribute to Stan. And so we're happy to be here and so honored. Rob is very honored to be here, honoring Stan's legacy and celebrating Stan with some of the greatest fans in the world. We in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia are honored that you guys came to show your work. To, uh, Rob has been doing a marvelous job right now. I mean, in real time, he is creating a wonderful work of art for us fans. We can't thank you enough for this. Thank you so much. And please, we want to see you guys again. Shakun, absolutely. Comic book artist and superstar Rob Pryor creating wonderful work of comic book art right now for the public. He's working on Spider-Man. But this is his other work.
Guys, we are here. Both son of Jatta and Discover Jatta. It's our huge honor. Meet Rob Pryor, the comic book artist who was commissioned by the late Stan Lee to reproduce all the famous Marvel iconic covers in Stan's image. Yep. So as you can see behind Rob, you find Demon in a Bottle cover that was done by Bob Layton and John Romita Jr. You got uh, this cover done by Deadpool uh, or was it uh, Don Heck? Maybe Don Heck. I, gotta, I think it was Don Heck. I yeah. think you're right. Don Heck's cover over there for Iron Man. You've got Cable. You've got the Uncanny X-Men by Neil Adams. He has this wonderful ability. He himself is a phenomenal artist on his own. As you can see what he has done with you. Imagine each and every iconic cover in Stan's image. This is marvelous. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, when Stan, he loved cameos, right? He loved them. And um, so there's a, a theater called the Man Chinese Theater in the United States where every all a bunch of famous people have their handprints. Yes, from in Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah. So he was getting his handprint ceremony. And he, they, he asked if I would be the warm-up act. I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I gladly do it for you, Stan. So after that, he came up to me with this idea, and he goes, I want to be a cameo in all of my favorite covers. Amazing. And I, but I, I said to him, I was like, Stan, I, it's not really what I do. It's not really how I paint. I, and he goes, Robbie, I'm 95 years old. That was it. I was like, okay, I'll do it. And uh, we ended up doing a hundred paintings. A hundred paintings yep. that have immortalized the late Stan Lee yeah. in the most marvelous fashion possible. Yeah, he uh, he just loved it. He he signed all of them. He he painted on a couple of them with me. Um, in his, his capacity, you know, he was he was 95, so he didn't do a lot. But it was just. He was just amazing. He was an amazing human being. Rob, on behalf of everyone in Jeddah, everyone in Saudi Arabia. And your country is amazing, by the way. I love it here. Thank you so much. These words really motivate us, really make us feel happy. But what makes it, it makes it even more blissful is the fact that creators like yourself decide to come and visit all of us. Oh, this, I, like I said, I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much, and thank you for taking the time to, to come over and talk with me. It's the least we can do. Expert on collectibles, action figures, all kinds of really cool rare stuff. Let's bring them up, son of Jetta. Yeah, baby. Yes, indeed. How you doing, my man? Great, great. All right. So you have an interesting story, you know, and for those people that are into collectibles, I mean, tell me, now you got started a lot of years ago. Yeah, uh, it started in 1984. Yeah. When my dad bought me my first set of 10 comic books, and uh, that's where the journey started. So tell me, I mean, back in the 80s, you couldn't just go on the internet and order stuff. So how did you get the stuff? Uh, forget the internet. You couldn't even go to the corner shop and expect to have a comic book. Yeah. Or a bookstore. You couldn't get a comic book here because at the time, uh, only DC Comics was pretty active in this part of the world. Uh-huh. Uh, so you had all the John Byrne, uh, Superman runs, uh, Jim Starlin and... Uh, uh, Batman runs translated yeah. into Arabic now but for a kid like me and many like me out there uh, we prefer to ha read comics in English mm. so now then we had to think what should we do so luckily I had my aunts who were living in the US so I would write a letter that letter would reach them in Florida in the next 10 days then they would go and check it out if they were able to find it and then they would uh, be able to buy them 
but not send them because post was really expensive sending it from the US yeah so when they would be visiting us then I would be able to get my comics and that was the limit 10 comics for one full year really yeah that was it so tell me uh, is a comic more valuable in uh, Arabic or English or is it the same value is one more valuable than the other the English one is more valuable because it's the original work. Right, okay. Originality matters. Whether uh, uh, the translated edition is just a translated edition. Gotcha. But of course, there are certain issues. Uh, if they are uh, limited in supply over the decades, mm. then they become really valuable. Okay. So, for example, uh, the reprint, the Arabic reprint of Amazing Fantasy number 15. That one is uh, a pretty sought-after commodity. And what makes a comic valuable? Like, oh, have you guys have you guys been over there and seen the the rare comic book display over there? Yeah, I mean that's some pretty cool stuff, right? So these things are worth a fortune. So, uh, in your expert opinion, what what makes a comic valuable? What, what makes it valuable? Uh, here's the thing. First is the r simple rule of supply and demand. So, if a comic from a particular era is less in supply, it will be more valuable. Okay. If it represents a popular character, it's going to be more valuable. If it's available in a good condition, which uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with CGC grading. So, uh, if the CGC says that this comic book is like 9.0 or 9.5, then the value goes even higher. Okay. Now, the cherry on top is if the comic book is signed yes of course yeah by the same writer or the same artist who actually worked on that issue okay or that series it's like having a record album or a cd that's signed by the art by the band exactly okay. is there a fan of magneto in saudi arabia definitely you are looking at a magneto cosplay done phenomenally well it's not super perfect how long did it take you to make this and the helmet especially? Well, it took me days just by, well, cutting the foam and then paint it for even an hour. Man, awesome. Congratulations for this wonderful cosplay. Um, you're you're I'm a star. I'm not here to win. I'm just here to Enjoy. improve. Okay. You can see the passion that's there. People trying to represent their favorite superhero, favorite oh, yeah. character Avengers. from a fairy tale, uh, you name it. It does. It's not restricted to a particular pop culture property. And the proof is in the pudding. There is a lot of hard work that's needed in order to look like your favorite character. And the beauty about it is that every day there was a cosplay competition. And each and every day I would be just amazed uh, by looking at first of all the level yeah, of participation as you can see the queue is quite long I even see a Doctor Doom cosplayer here and go. then right. uh, you know people are so so excited uh, to prove themselves that how much they love their character and how active they are in the participation it's just amazing and like uh, like you saw Kat Kurashi who was dressed like Magneto he was not in the Comic Con just to participate and win a prize he just wanted to be himself and this is proof that like any other country whether it's the United States the United Arab Emirates Saudi Arabia and uh, city of Jeddah Riyadh Khobar so many places so many cities they are home to passionate cosplayers and these cosplayers anyone who thinks that Saudi Arabia is all about anime or Saudi Arabia is all about Marvel well you are absolutely wrong you can see for yourself the representation uh, that's there for anime for Marvel for DC for other pop culture properties like Game of Thrones uh, Walking Dead uh, The Matrix uh, the list goes on and on yes. and here we see a Jack Sparrow uh, Johnny Depp's uh, character from Pirates of the Caribbean 
winning the grand prize, a hand-painted portrait of the Batman by local artist Hadi. So, what more needs to be said about the passion for pop culture in this market? Well, today is the third day, the final day of Stan Lee Supercon. It was one of the best experiences, even though there were quite a lot of uh, uh, shortcomings that happened due to time and logistical reasons uh, because the event was announced roughly like six weeks back and uh, but the thing is that it sh th th this, this Supercon just showed that despite uh, a very slim celebrity lineup despite uh, a lot of uh, uh, things happening in an ex unexpected way uh, people in Jeddah and in Saudi Arabia were yearning to be in a convention where they can be with like-minded people and uh, all you see is uh, happy people all around you because the last two years have been really tough on everyone and uh, some of the good things that happened were the introduction to NFT comics that was done by Mike Burnley, the CEO of uh, Stanley Supercon, and Alex Ponovich, uh, the actor uh, from Hawkeye and Van Helsing. These guys are coming up with something really exciting. And what I believe it now is that the community in Saudi Arabia is now even more uh, excited and eager to have a much well-organized uh, well-planned, well-marketed uh, Stanley Supercon happening next year. Hopefully it happens in Jeddah uh, because the liveliness that I have seen here, uh, even though I really enjoyed Stanley Supercon Riyadh, but the liveliness factor uh, dominates in Jeddah. And you can see for yourself.